Hey guys, it's Julian, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make progressive house like Sasha and John Digweed. As usual, you can get the full project file and samples and MIDI presets, everything like that from this video is available right at the top of the description. And if you're a patient on my Patreon, check there because it's already available there as well. And yeah, let's dive in. We're at 125 BPM, and the first sound that I have here is this granular vocal synth thing, which sounds like this. So this is just joining this one note here. It's playing C, although we're in the key of E minor, but this is just kind of what note was E. Based on the original pitch of this vocal. And yeah, so the way this is made is using Ableton's granulator. It is a granular synth from Max for Live. I'm sure you've heard of it. What this is doing is essentially, it's kind of like a sampler where you take a sample and play it back. But where it differs from a sampler is a granular synth is essentially, you can see that little yellow line there. It's essentially moving all around the sample and it's just constantly looping different pieces of the sample. And thus, you get this kind of cool moving, sort of evolving, very organic sound. And yeah, so this is a great way to create like a nice sort of background drone like this, you know, typically in this style. You might have, like, in your intro, you might have it kind of like this, like, having something there on top of the track to not just be just percussion and bass, but something that's a bit more of a background element, but is, you know, still a bit melodic like this. So yeah, I've got this set like this, and you can see, and then we just have that going through, actually, two choruses here. So here's without these. And then with them, so you can hear, yeah, it seems like a lot, but adding that second one just gives it a little bit more texture and kind of puts it more in the background space. Then we have some reverb, and then I have this low pass filter. So there's without that, it just cuts it back so it's like really just going to be more in the background. And then we just have finally this auto pan here, which is just, you can see the phase is on zero, so it's just like bouncing up doing quarter notes to make it sound kind of like being sidechained. But it makes it a little bit more uniform when you do it that way. And yeah, that is the vocal pad. The next thing here is this art. So here are the notes. You can see it is actually a lot simpler than it sounds. It's literally just two notes because you can see we have E and G and then just E and G an octave up essentially. I think it might be, I'm pretty sure that E is like two octaves up and, but then the G is one octave up from the other one. But yeah, so you can see very, very simple notes. You know, the key to writing an ARP like this and making it work really well and making it catchy is just using as few notes as possible, like two or three notes and then just kind of play with those across different octaves and with different rhythms and stuff. Like, you know, we have, like, here it goes, do do do. And then we just, do 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 do. You know, and then, like, the first time it just goes, do no 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 no. And then, ba 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 no. Yeah, there's, like, a bit of call and response there. So it's like, it's really just about getting creative with these different combinations of very simple note patterns like this. Now, for the sound on this one, it is made with analog. You can see we have two sound waves here. I've got them an octave apart. And then we also have a bit of white noise. And then I have the amp envelope here, which is set like this. And you can see there's a bit of automation on the release. So if you notice, like... How it kind of like opens up a bit there and creates like that, that like ringing out over top of it. It's just kind of like ringing out there. So yeah, this is another thing is like, you know, with these super simple patterns, the idea is the notes are very simple and then we're adding another layer of depth just with like the, with the cool automation that's happening there. And yeah, and then I just have a bit of vibrato and a bit of unison. Then we have this auto pan. Just kind of giving it a bit more space because it's panning. Just a little bit from left to right. 
Then we have this chorus, which is giving it some more space. And then we have this echo here, you can see. So this is on the ping pong setting, we've got it on dotted eighth notes. And then you can see, I've automated this as well. So at the same time as that release automation. Again, these are the little things that are going to bring it to life and make it feel more progressive and less, like, kind of flat. Then we just have a bit of saturation, which is beefing this up. Here's without it. And then with it, you can hear what that does to really make it, like, this hard-hitting, roaring, progressive synth like this. And then finally, we just have a compressor side-chaining it to the kick. And then this EQ here, just cutting out a bit of low end and then boosting the highs and the high mid range a little bit. Oh yeah, that's it for the ARP. Then we have this little bass stab. So that's that little you hear it kind of happening in the background there. So. The way this is made is, it's just playing one note, it's just playing E, that is what you would typically do. Like, if you're making a bass stab like this, just whatever the root note of your key is, just always play that. But for the sound with this one, what this is, is it is two saw waves here. You can see they're at the same octave, and then they're going into this bandpass filter. And then we have the amp envelope set like that, and then I just have a bit of unison. And then what's happening here, so here's basically the sound. It's that bandpass saw wave sound, which is going into this erosion here. So here's without that. And then with it. So you can hear the erosion's adding that cool texture. I'm automating the frequency. And then after that, we're going into this low pass filter. And so that's what makes it so it's just like a without having all that like high end and mid range to it. But yeah, so we're just automating that to open. Like that. And then it closes down. So, yeah, the idea here is we're creating this, like, very harmonically rich, big, sort of, like, mid rangey bass stab. You know, this is very much like something you'd hear in one of these type of tracks, or, like, in a techno track. And then we're just dialing it back, and then just kind of, like, letting out a little bit of that stuff by having this low pass open up. And yeah, then we just have this going through a bit of chorus and a bit of reverb. And then we have this amp here. So this is the last thing for, like, getting that particular sound. Like, I'll turn that off and I'll turn off the low pass. So here's really what it sounds like just coming out of the synth into the erosion. So you can hear that amp is important. If you want to give these kinds of basses, like, a cool texture and not have it just be, like, a super dry saw wave sound, this is what you gotta do, is use distortion like this. And then after that we have some drum muffs to make it even more powerful. And then we just have a compressor side chaining into the kick and a high pass filter cutting out the lows. And then that's it for the bass stab. And then underneath that we have these little percussions. So these are like some nice sort of deep percussion like this. And then what's happening is it's doing that and then there's this reverb being automated, so you can see that happening there. So, if you listen... You hear how that kind of plays off of what's happening with the bass stab? That's the idea there, is it's a combination of this element adding the percussion with the... But then with the... Like, reverb coming in there? That's like adding some very nice texture to that bass stab. And then when you hear it in the track, it kind of all just comes together as one. So yeah, when you're doing stuff like this, you know, it's important to kind of match it to other things in the mix. And not just having a bunch of different things automating around. But if you're going to have some cool automation of an effect like this, maybe ha try having it play off of what's happening with another instrument. And it goes even further because if you look at the automations on the ARP, you can see they're happening at the same time, too. So 
so it's three elements coming together to bring you that like <laughs> and that's what really makes a cohesive track that's gonna feel like very full and together and even if it's a lot of things happening you know they're all working toward the same goal so it's gonna work still it's not gonna sound too overcrowded then we just have some drum bus on that and a high pass filter and that's it for the percussions and then from there we have the kick So this is more so about the style of kick you choose, you know, just one of these, like, more basic kicks. It's typically what you'll hear in the style. You know, it's basic, but it still, as you can see, has, like, a very powerful transient. It still hits very hard. It punches through the mix. And yeah, and that's just going through a bit of drum bus and then a bit of EQ to kind of boost up a little bit of mid-range punch. Cut out a little bit of high end and make it a bit deeper. And yeah, then we have this bass tom. So it's a very popular way to make the bass lines in the style of progressive. What it is, is it's this tom sound. Like, you know, like you would find in an 808 tom or something like that. And then I just have it down here just playing this like deep bassy note. And you can see I've got this. So it's just playing the root note. It's just playing E. And it's doing like this. Doom, doom, doom. You know, it's a very energetic bass line. There's a lot of groove happening. Just because you're hearing that. Burn, 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 over and over and over. So. Yeah, I've got that just being low pass a little bit. I've shortened the amp envelope a little as well, turn the sustain down. And then that's just going through some drum bus, which really helps to beef this up. There we go, I'll actually turn that frequency up a little bit. I just got that there. I have this utility converting into mono as well, just to make sure that it's not going to have any weird stereo stuff happening. And then finally, I just have this EQ cutting out a bit of room for the kick. And then on the group, this kick bass group here, it's just a little bit of bussing to glue the kick and the bass line together. And really all it is is just a bit of saturation. So here's without it. And with it, you can hear what this does, you know? And it's very important to give it that extra, like, push to really glue the kick and bass line together and make it feel full and, like, one and just really groove properly in the mix. You know, if I turn this off, you'll notice. The kick and bass line just aren't as powerful as when you glue them together with the saturation. Oh yeah, then we have these shakers. So what's happening here is, this is that main sort of like, chick -chick, you hear in the background, and typically in these silo tracks, you know, it's not just going to be like a little quiet, like, chick -chick -chick. you know, it needs to be like this very fat, full sounding thing like this. And so we've got a few layers to assist with this. The first one is just this regular, you know, just like a standard shaker. You can see I've got it going like, chick -chick -chick, kind of like building up with velocity. So that's the main one. Then we have this tambourine. Which you can hear just adds some nice high end. I've also got an auto pan on this, so now we're getting some stereo width. And a little bit of cool stuff happening between the different elements. And then we have this noise. Which is just going through, you can see here's without these effects. We've got an erosion, high pass. And then auto pan to make it kind of bounce off of the kick. And yeah, so we have those three layers. And then we're just putting them through a bit of reverb, drum bus, and then a high pass. So here's without that. And then with it. So you can hear the difference. So yeah, it's important to keep this in mind. Like, again, it's not just going to be like a little tiny shaker loop going to in the background, you really got to do everything you can like this to make it sound really full and big. And you know, like even just having that noise layer, like if I turn that off, so 
See how, like, it almost just sounds like it's part of the shaker. Like, it sounds like the reverb tail or something like that, but it's really just adding that extra, like, fullness to it. To really, to really make sure you can hear it, you know, like, if you just have, like, a little tiny shaker, you're not going to really hear it properly in the mix. Then we have these claps. So yeah, this is just this nice little clap kind of adding some background percussion. You can hear it plays off of these. Yeah, there's a very nice groove happening there between the percussions and this clap. And it's another one of those like extra sort of background elements that can be easily overlooked, but it's important not to overlook this because this is adding a lot of depth and fullness to the track. So that's just like your standard sort of clap. I've got it going through a bit of reverb and a bit of drum bus. And then the last layer down here is this hi-hat. And this is just that main hi-hat that's playing on the upbeats so that we get Like that, you'll notice this is a lot drier than the shakers. That's another thing, like, we have the shakers going through that reverb, and then this hi-hat doesn't have anything on it. This is a good technique because it kind of puts them in different places. Like, it lets you know when you're hearing it that this hi-hat is, like, meant to be right up front every time. And then the shakers are more background, but they still have, like, enough punch, power, and fullness to them. And yeah, so what this one is, is it's just this sample. It's this hi-hat. You know, very fat and mid-rangey, and then what's happening here is I've got it going through, I've sort of shortened it with the amplitude envelope, like that. And then it's going through some drum bus, so here's without that. Really gives it that punch. And then we just have a high pass filter, cutting out the low one. And yeah, that's it for that hi-hat. And that is also going to be it for this video, guys. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, every single thing from this video you can get right at the top of the description on my fan cam. So it's a great way to support me. If you guys enjoyed this video, this video and you've been enjoying my videos lately, definitely check that out because I don't make a whole lot off of YouTube. But with these sample packs and different things like this, I'm able to keep going and keep bringing you guys a bunch of new information and showing you how to take your tracks to the next level. And yeah, thank you so much everybody and I will see you tomorrow with another video.